Hey, Yannick, uh, Vinny with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Um, welcome to Las Vegas. And, um, you know, going back to last year, uh, it always seemed like your name was connected with the Raiders. Uh, there was seemed to be interest uh, for the Raiders in you. Um, was the feel, feeling mutual? And what was it about the Raiders this time around uh, that, that kind of cinched the deal for you? Yeah, uh, for sure. This was a place um, that I always uh, dreamed about being. Uh, to work, but also, um, yeah, the Raiders organization, they definitely tried to reach out and grab me, you know, early in the process, and uh, unfortunately, it didn't go the way that uh, we both wanted, so, you know, it took time, and ultimately, I'm back here uh, where I wanted to be, and it worked out, so um, I would say, man, uh, everything happens for a reason. Hey, this is Tashawn Reed from The Athletic. Uh, obviously, outside of yourself, you know, the Raiders also made some, some other moves in free agency to, to beef up that defensive line. Um, you know, that's been a position group that they've been expecting a lot of for the last couple of years and trying to find ways to get more pass rush and get better at defending the run. How confident that, are you that you all can kind of turn around at the defensive line group and be impactful in 2021? Yeah, absolutely. You got guys that you just signed like uh, Solomon Thomas, Quentin Jefferson. You got Max up here. You got a lot of defensive talent, defensive linemen that uh, we can just gel together and put – you know, the knowledge that we have as far as uh, playing a run and pass rush, that we can kind of turn this thing around and make it real special and get over that hump. Yannick, this is Hondo Carpenter. As a top-tier free agent defensive player, how much did it appeal to you, the potent offense the Raiders have with Derek? Oh, you know, I, I seen that firsthand in 2019 when, we, uh, when I was still part of the Jacksonville Jaguars and we played uh, that last game in that Coliseum. And... Uh, you can just tell, you know, you got guys like uh, the tight end Waller, you got uh, Jacobs, you got uh, Carr, and you got the, uh, the the guy that was just a rookie, you know. So um, they have they have a great offense here, man, and they already, they already put that together. Now it's time for the defensive side of the ball to help that offense side out a lot, you know what I mean? So. Got Jerry McDonald from the Bay Area News Group. Your rookie year coincided with the last year of Gus Bradley in Jacksonville, and I'm just as head coach, and I'm wondering what the appeal of Bradley was to, to come here. Uh, yeah, it was a no-brainer. Uh, coach Gus was a guy that had input and drafted me uh, back in 2016. He knows what I what I bring to this game, and um, I feel like that's a coach that knows how to utilize my skill set to make it super effective to help the team as best as possible. So uh, with Gus being here, I know it's like another father figure for me. It's another guy that can help me out while I'm out here in a different coast. So it's a blessing. Unique, um, you know, uh, defensive lines, uh, the good ones, uh, are kind of a combination of individual talent, skill sets, and collectively they, they produce. When you look at the what you're working with on this defensive line, um, what is it about it that you feel, uh, you know, uh, can create that kind of pass rush that, uh, that that Gus Bradley needs in this defense that you guys are running? Yeah, it just goes back to what I said earlier. You got guys like Max. Uh, we just signed Quentin. We just signed uh, Solomon. And um, those guys, uh, those are guys that can rush when you put on the tape. Those are guys that play physical football. And with our mindsets together and just uh, being able to bounce information and ideas off each other, it should be a lot of plays made this, e this year coming up. Yannick, uh, speaking about the signing of Quentin, you two definitely have history uh, together playing at Maryland. How excited are you to be back on the defensive line with him? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a great, it's a, it's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, that's a guy that I got drafted with. We have the same birthday. We have the same goals as far as uh, how we want to be remembered um, as men, as football players. So it's just a, it's just, it's divine timing, man, having a guy like that to be able to rush with and um, play football with. Hey, this is a Vic from The Athletic. Um, how weird has it been for you? This is, I think that was your fourth team in, in eight months. Uh, it's not it's not too weird, you know what I mean? My love for the game is still there. Uh, it's, t it's guys that, you know, have bounced around teams before, not from a production standpoint, but just off, you know, fits and things like that. Um, it's just part of the game, you know? Uh, you can go along, you can go down along a, a line of list of players that have played on uh, multiple teams and have great careers like the Terrell Owens, the Deion Sanders, the Kevin Greens, uh, may you rest in peace, um, guys like that. So it's not about the, the how many times you've bounced around. It's about what you do, where you're at. Hey, it's Deshaun again. Uh, you know, obviously you're, you're still young yourself and early in your career, but you're one of the older guys kind of on this young defensive line. 
Um, how do you expect yourself to kind of become a leader this year? Obviously, you haven't gotten into you know, all practice and games yet. How do you expect yourself to become a leader this season? You know, just doing what I do um, as, as a man. Um, what I've been doing since I got into this league. Uh, setting an example in practice, that's where it starts at. It starts in practice. It doesn't start on Sundays. And the way you go about your work, uh, the way you treat your teammates, the way uh, you take in the coaching, that's how I can make, uh, I can help contribute to this team becoming even better. Um, those are the major things. And uh, guys will see surely enough that I'm a, I'm a work hard guy. I love to practice hard. And uh, when you do those things, it can translate into the game. Yeah, I guess uh, Josh Jubel from AP. Um, you and Richie obviously have had a couple issues a few years ago. So, I mean, was that all put to rest um, at, at the Pro Bowl that year? And have you guys talked for sure, at all? For sure, for sure. That, that's been put to rest since the Pro Bowl. You know, um, it's part of the game, man. We all talk trash and stuff like that. And sometimes we go overboard with things. But, you know, uh, it's all about forgiving, man. Uh, that's, I feel like that's what's wrong with the world nowadays, man. We, we look at problems. Uh, that occur and we stick it. We stick with that stigma, and we 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 kind of we don't know how to we don't we don't know how to forgive. And I'm a forgiving dude, and I'm a guy that's I don't really care, man. I'm I'm ready to play for Richie. I'm the type of guy when uh, when we're playing, if somebody is in is in Richie's face or anything like that, I'm backing him up 100. percent So all that that's out the window. Hey Yannick, it's uh, Chris Matthews with the uh, CBS affiliate here in Las Vegas. I'm kind of curious. Your, your your notions of the Raiders prior to signing and now when you hear of, you know, Raider Nation and, and just that silver and black and that commitment, what do you kind of tell the fans? What what What's a message that you would have for them? And, and just your thoughts on, on the, the Raider organization itself and that, that silver and black tradition. Well, my thoughts on the silver and black tradition uh, is uh, it's nothing but it's prestige, just greatness. You look at that Hall of Fame wall of just from being inside this building, you see all the greats, all the people that they, uh, – that shed their blood, sweat, and tears on the field, you know, to help build this organization to be where it is. And just to uh, tell the fans, you know, you're getting a guy that's going to bring it 100% every single play, uh, that's going to represent this, this Raider Nation well. And um, I'm here to win. I'm here to, I'm here to uh, help bring a Super Bowl here. Yeah, Yannick, besides the sacks, you, uh, you got a lot of forced fumbles, and I, and I haven't seen a breakdown of all of them. Are most of them pass rush, or do you strip on running plays too, or what's kind of your philosophy on getting the ball out? Uh, my philosophy is, um, you know, when you get past the tackle, what's the, what's the thing that can make you the best, and that's getting the ball out. Getting the ball out uh, gives your offense a chance to score points if you, re if you can recover the ball back. Uh, you know, if you sack the quarterback, it's all cool, but you still give that offense another opportunity to be able to, uh, go down for another play, depending upon what down and distance it is. If it was the first down, you got a sack. They, they still have a chance, you know, to um, recuperate for two more downs. But if when you strip the, the football and you, you recover it back, you give your offense another opportunity. And also, you save uh, the energy of the other ten guys you're playing with on the field because they they can get off the field now and drink Gatorade. Uh, Donnie, was it frustrating or disappointing for you at all to hit free agency? Uh, in this reduced cap year and, and the way things work out for you? Uh, man, uh, I, I feel like God does everything for a reason, and he wouldn't bring you too far just to drop you off. So uh, we've got to trust a man above with those things, and um, I'm just excited, man. You know, the money the money is going to come. All those things come when you do what you're supposed to do and be true to yourself at the end of the day. Yannick, this team is very young on defense, but there's a lot of talent there. And obviously, you're not the oldest guy in the league, but how much did they talk to you about coming in and being a leader and what you can offer in the locker room and off the field? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Coach Gruden, we've got together and we, we talked about that a lot, you know, about, uh, you know, just uh, being a great presence in this building, uh, leading by example. And um, it goes like it goes back to like what I said. It starts in practice. The way you practice is the way – uh, guys perceive you because that's the way you, how you go about your work not just in practice how you are in meetings how are you taking notes are you a guy that's on your phone in the meeting uh, those are things that people look at uh, how, how locked in you are from the time you get inside the building to the time you leave the building and um, that's what I'm going to bring I'm going to bring that you know that hard that hard working uh, chip on my shoulder uh, kind of mentality Hey there, this is Cassie with the Las Vegas Review Journal. As someone who is going to be saying your name quite frequently, can you please just give us all the proper pronunciation of your name? Yes, it's Unique Ngakwe, 
But if you ever want to interview me for anybody that's here, you can just call me Jan for short. It's more simple. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Yannick, a uh, quick question for you. Uh, since entering the NFL, you've been wearing number 91. Kendall Vickers has that number. I'm just wondering if you're going to try to get that number from him. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing number 91 until I retire. Okay, thank you for your time. Appreciate y'all. Did you hear anything, Solomon? Mm-mm. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Come here. Come here. It's, like, it's like real choppy. So. Real choppy? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jonathan, uh, Vinny Monson here with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Welcome to Las Vegas. Um, you know, obviously, you know a lot about the Raiders playing up in Stanford in the Bay Area. Was this a team that was on your radar? And what kind of a role do you uh, do you figure to have um, here in Las Vegas? Uh, definitely, you know, the Raiders were, you know, a team that were on my radar. Uh, you know, they have a great history and tradition there, you know, being from the Bay. Definitely seen that growing up and, um, you know, just around the league. But uh, last season, I, I tore my ACL, so I was at home watching a lot of football. So I spent a lot of time, you know, watching the Raiders, you know, I've, known the history of Coach Marinelli as well and seen the way he, he plays guys. And I was, you know, hoping, you know, I might get a chance to, uh, you know, negotiate with them. You know, that all ended up working out. And, you know, I was blessed to, you know, just, just sign uh, with, the, with the Las Vegas Raiders. And I'm so happy about it. But, you know, playing that three tech is, you know, is what we see me doing. And, you know, I'm super excited for it. I believe that that's a perfect spot for me. And I believe I can really excel in it and help the team here. Hey Solomon, it's uh, Josh Duba at AP. Um, talking about the three tech, um, what, you obviously moved around a little bit in San Francisco. Why is the three tech suited to you? Why do you think that's going to be the best spot for you? Uh, the three tech is where I made my my bread and butter in college. You know, that's where I feel the most you know efficient. I feel like I can be extremely explosive. I'm quick. You know, I'm really strong with my size, and you know, I'm just I'm just ready to go there. You know, I'm ready to wreak havoc. I'm ready to get after it, and we're going to be disruptive. And you know, I'm I'm really lucky to be a part of you know this talented defensive line. You know, this great team and. Um, you know, a team filled with great history and tradition. Hey, this is Vic from The Athletic. Uh, what did Gus Bradley tell you that got you excited? How do you think you fit mm -hmm. in with Gus and, and this defense? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, going through the draft process, you know, back in 2017, you know, I met Gus a few times, and then, uh, you know, him and Robert Sala are very close. And so, you know, we kind of had a, a pre-existing relationship. So, uh, you know, when I got on the phone with him, you know, it was pretty normal and, and just talked about the defense. You know, I know how great of a coach he is. I know his philosophy and, you know, I'm just really excited to play for him. You know, I'm, you know, he's a guy his, his players love and, you know, I'm really lucky to be playing for him. Solomon, this is Hondo Carpenter. Obviously, they're fine. Their medical people checked you out. I'm just curious, where are you at percentage wise to where you were before the injury? Um, you know, so I'm five months post post op right now. And I'm feeling great, you know, feel normal walking, um, no restrictions lifting. I'm doing all, all the lifting, single leg, double leg, you know, um, you know, so I'm, I'm feeling good. Started running, you know, a lot of sprint mechanics, running motions, uh, you know, working into lateral work. So I'm, I'm pretty ahead of schedule. I'm, you know, around month five, uh, close to month six, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, continue to finish that rehab just so I can be 100 percent. But, you know, I, I know I'll be ready to go in 100 percent before camp. Yeah, so I'm in Jerry McDonald from the Bay Area News Group. Curious, you said you watched a lot of Raiders football last year, and that kind of got you excited a little bit. Uh, I'm curious, they didn't play very good defense last year for the most part. So what did you see that encourages you? Uh, I saw the way their defensive line played. You know, I saw the young talent. Um, you know, I, I can see the way Coach Marinelli coaches these guys. You know, they get off the rock, they play hard. Um, you know, and also watch Coach Marinelli when he was with the Cowboys, too, and I watched the way his D-line plays there, too. And, you know, it just transfers over. Um, so, you know, I'm extremely excited to play along this D-line and play with Coach Marinelli and, you know, these, these talented players. Solomon, uh, you were part of a, a great rotation in San Francisco, um, defensive line, and that's so important uh, in today's football. Uh, do you see some of the uh, similar uh, ingredients with, you know, Yannick now here and uh, uh, Clinton coming here, yourself, Cleve Farrell, Max Crosby? Do you see, you know, some similarities there? 
Uh, you know, definitely. You know, I, I mean, I don't know how to compare, but, I, you know, I, I can definitely see, you know, the talents there. You know, I see the tenacity, the efforts there. You know, the guys who want to be here are there. And, you know, guys who can make it happen are there. Um, so, you know, so, you know, this D-line has the potential is, is, is the sky. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to play with them. You know, we have a lot of talent, uh, a lot of guys who are hungry and want to play. And, you know, it's going to be a fun year. Solomon, obviously it's a one-year deal, but for a guy like you coming off an injury with next year with the new money coming into the salary cap, really it's a, it was almost a blessing for you signing a one-year deal, is it not? Because mm -hmm. one year to prove yourself and then, bam, the mm -hmm. salary cap goes up. Definitely, yes, sir. You know, it's, it's perfect timing for myself, and I feel very lucky. And, um, you know, you know the one-year deal worked out great, and you know, I'm just very happy, you know, I landed here. It's the perfect, perfect spot for me, and, you know, hopefully we can keep it going. Yeah, Solomon, obviously you come in with had sort of the you know, the burden of being the third overall pick and, and I wonder how you've carried that. You know, the, the six sacks, that's not necessarily your job is to sack the mm -hmm. quarterback all the time, but you know, when you're the third pick, people expect a lot of things. And how have you kind of mm -hmm. carried that burden? Uh definitely, you know, uh you know, it's definitely something that, you know, I've I've had to transition through and, and work through in my journey. Um, you know, especially the first couple of years I struggled with that. Uh but, you know, I've you know, I wouldn't really change anything that's happened in the past four years. You know, um, you know, didn't go how I wanted to, but you know, I've I've learned about myself. I've grown. I've matured. I've become into the complete person I am today. I've come into the complete player I am today. I believe in myself more than I ever have, and I truly believe my career is just now starting. You know, I've played four years in the league, but I really feel as young as I've ever felt, even coming off an ACL injury, and I feel the most excited and hungry I've ever felt in my life. And so, you know, I'm ready for this. You know, you know, it took four years to come full circle and learn all this and, and really become one with me. But, you know, it was worth it, and that's how life works. And, you know, I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to prove the greatness of Solomon Thomas and, and what's about to come. Okay, thank you, Solomon. Thank you guys so much.